Hey everyone, Cody here, and welcome back to another video. Today I've got a decent sized monochromatic painting for you. The colors we'll be working with are light gray, dark gray, black, and a super light light gray, almost white, um, that you see here over on the right. So those are the four colors that we'll be using today. The type of painting is a dabbed painting. So I simply am using a piece of corrugated cardboard, or sorry, corrugated plastic, to simply dab the painting over and over. Um, as always, the type of paint that we're using today is gloss enamel. I use a local brand called Dun Edwards, and uh, it's basically just a high gloss uh, house paint. The uh, now let's talk about the painting itself. Why did I do this type of painting? Well, I've been digging this kind of dabbed type of painting recently. And so I decided that I was going to do it more and more. And uh, I really like, I don't know, I've, I've been really enjoying this type of painting. And uh, they've come out really cool. I mean, the effect of them is kind of dynamic. The only problem is over stippling it or over dabbing it can kind of create this problem where it starts to mix the colors. So you kind of have to be careful with how much um, you pull the colors together. Um, but this one towards the end actually turned out pretty cool. And I guess we'll talk about a couple of other things. So the paper that I'm using is Canson, I believe, and it's watercolor paper. Now, I've kind of found that the watercolor paper holds up pretty well. However, it does tend to get a little soggy, I guess, under the weight of the gloss enamel because the gloss enamel is, is a heavy paint. I mean, it's made for houses um, or for like fire trucks or, you know, banisters in a house or something. So sometimes it can tend to be a little heavy for it. Um, and because of that, it can kind of paint cause the paper to warp a little bit. Now here I'm pulling some of this color out because there wasn't, for me, there wasn't enough variation. Uh, there wasn't enough light spots in the painting. So I tried to add a little bit of white to it to kind of pull that out. And then it kind of turned uh, gray all over the painting. And this is exactly what I was talking about, where if you kind of move it too much, then it can pull too much of that color and they start to bleed together and they become muddy. And so, you know, that gray was kind of taking over and I needed to kind of balance it out. So that's why I added a little bit of black and a little bit of white to the sides to kind of help balance it out. Um, the reason I chose the colors is simply because I really, I really dig uh, black, white, and gray, like the whole monochromatic uh, idea. One of my favorite paintings I ever did was one called Monochromatic Dream. It's a Pollock style painting that I did with black, white, and gray. And I'm looking at it right now, even as I record this video and, and talk to you about it. Uh, here, what I'm doing is just kind of filling in any gaps that the gloss enamel might have left in the painting so that there's no white spots of the, of the actual watercolor paper kind of coming through and, you know, leaving those gaps in there. Now, one thing that I've kind of realized with some of these other paintings that I've been doing like this and the style, you'll see a lot of these if you see any of my other videos, but, uh, you know, I haven't been doing like the background, so I haven't been like painting the background any specific color to kind of give it a toned background, but I think I'm going to have to kind of do that for some of my darker paintings so that if there are gaps, I don't have to go back and try to fill them later because it does kind of create a, a challenge. So again, uh, there's still a lot of, there was still a lot of gray in this painting and I didn't like that it was unbalanced. So because of that, you know, I, I'm still adding a little bit more white, and a little bit more black to just really balance it out so that it doesn't feel like it's lopsided or like it's kind of just tilting to one side where it's this color over here and this color over there. Although I might do some more like that, um, but I do have some ideas of, of paintings that I'll probably be doing in the future. 
concerning that. And I mean, that's pretty much it. So overall, I was pretty happy with the way that this painting turned out. Uh, it did, it did have a lot of like variation. And I felt like the colors are, were pretty balanced on here. And I'll here I'm using masking tape around the edges to both keep it in place, but also to kind of make it so it doesn't stick to the board. So when I first started doing these types of paintings, like on watercolor paper as opposed to canvas, I almost always used canvas before about them. Well, within the last two months, I started kind of using more of the paper. And when I first started doing it, I didn't tape it down. I just started painting to it. And it actually would, you know, stick to that, like the board that you see it on is actually just a sheet of plywood. And it would stick to the, to the board because I didn't have like any tape around the edges. So then it would rip the painting afterwards. So having those tape, having that tape around the edges, you know, one, it keeps it so that it doesn't stick to the board. But two, it also gives it kind of a nice clean edge. Now, it is lopsided, but I, I put my pictures in frames anyway, so you don't really see that. But overall, this was it. Hopefully, you enjoyed this painting and the tutorial, and I'll catch you guys in another one. Take care.